Hi, I'm Cindy with Earth Science Resources, and today we're speaking with Max Lindemann. He is a hydrologist at the USGS. My name is Max Lindemann. I'm a hydrologist with the US Geological Survey, which is an earth science agency of the federal government that's in charge of collecting data on and analyzing um, things about natural resources of the United States and natural hazards. And by resources, that's a pretty wide umbrella. It can include oil and gas, water, ecological health, and minerals. And in terms of hazards, that can be, again, a pretty wide range of things like earthquakes, volcanoes, flooding, landslides, and ecological stresses. So as a, a hydrologist, we, we study water in all of its forms. So that includes water flowing underground as groundwater, surface water in, in rivers, and also frozen water like glaciers. And we also study the interface of that system with human society and how we're using it and how changes in this, this system affect us and how we want to use it as a resource. Uh, it's pretty obvious that water is a, a very necessary thing for, for humans. You can't go days without it, but it's not something that a lot of people think about. And at the same time, it sounds very specific because it's a study of a, one very particular thing, but it's a very interdisciplinary study. And I think that's typical of most earth science disciplines where it seems very specific on a superficial level, but as you really look into it, it's a pretty broad interdisciplinary field. And so you have these subspecialties dealing with, say, surface water, groundwater, snow, glaciers, that kind of thing. And the, the role that geologists, uh, sorry, geologists will typically get into is the study of groundwater, just because we tend to have skill sets focusing on um, that element of the, the water cycle. And so that's what I do. I'm a groundwater hydrologist. And uh, a typical workday is what you would expect a scientist to do. We, we have to write proposals. So we have to come up with uh, thinking about problems that perhaps we could answer by collecting data and studying them. We write up a proposal and we'll send it out to people that are going to fund this work. We have to make the argument that it's important and necessary. And since I work for the, the federal government, it really has to be something that benefits the public at large. And once we get funding, hopefully for this project, then we actually start to, to do the science itself. And in the, in the job that I have right now, it's mostly computational type things. And again, it's a pretty wide field. You could be out in the, uh, your study area just collecting water levels or um, on a boat in a stream collecting data that way. Uh, what I do, I found that I'm pretty good with computers overall. I like doing software programming and using GIS software and that kind of thing. So I've, I've tend to, I've gone down that path of things. And so a typical workday for me is dealing with a lot of data, just manipulating it to get into the format that I want and then applying it. And one thing that I do a lot of is geologic mapping. So I have specialized software for analyzing the subsurface and creating maps of what that looks like uh, in terms of how that affects groundwater flow. So creating uh, layers of the subsurface that we think are uh, guiding the flow of groundwater or the, the origin of contaminants. And then we use that data to feed it into groundwater models, which are mathematical conceptualization of the, of the subsurface and how we think water is moving through it. And Ultimately, we use these models to address questions that are important for society, such as how much water is there? Is it um, uh, what, what its quality is like? And also related issues like land loss or subsidence. Uh, most people don't think of that as a, a groundwater issue, but there are areas where when you withdraw groundwater, the land can start to, to sink because the water is not very compressible. And ultimately it can, as you withdraw it, the ground will start to sink. And that can be a big problem in some areas. I just saw a, an article about Mexico City, where that's a, a major problem in Houston. There's a lot of subsidence. My, my interest in geology really started when I was pretty young. Um, my family did a lot of hiking and camping. So I had a, 
um, appreciation of the outdoors. And we used to have a, a cabin that we would go and visit in upstate New York, where there's the, these old mountains that have little shell fossils from when the, the oceans covered that from millions of years ago. And as a kid, it's pretty cool to just be running around in these streams and picking up rocks that have shells in them when you're nowhere near the ocean. And I think that's really what got me interested in, in geology from a very like early time in my life. But when, when I graduated high school and I enrolled in, uh, in my undergraduate program at Stony Brook University on Long Island, I didn't really know what I wanted to do exactly. And I, I wasn't really a, a science focused kind of student at the start. Like in high school, I was more interested in, in the arts and history and English, that kind of thing. So I had in my head that I wanted to become a lawyer at the start of my undergraduate career. Um, and to become a lawyer, there's not really any particular path before you go into law school. You can really study anything you want. And so I still had to pick something that I wanted to do. A lot of people would do like uh, political science or something, but I had this interest in the outdoors and uh, I, I like science. And I took a, a gen ed geology class and I found it really interesting. So I enrolled in the environmental studies program at first. And eventually that seemed a little too broad for me and maybe didn't drill down enough into something um, very technical. So I wanted that background as well. So I, I switched over to geology and I made it through that undergraduate program. And really my first exposure to working in a professional capacity as a geologist was as a, a volunteer intern for a, it was on a joint project between the agency I work for now, the USGS and the EPA or Environmental Protection Agency. And the project was studying contamination plumes that were originating from the Superfund sites, what they call them, which are typically industrial or military waste sites where they maybe buried something in the ground and it's infiltrated the groundwater system and starting to move so they want to track it. And so I was working on a project that involved uh, studying those contamination plumes from the sites. And it was just a volunteer opportunity, uh, pretty simple stuff, a lot of data entry and hanging out with these uh, hydrologists that work for the USGS. And that was really my first work experience um, as, a, as a scientist. And when I, when I graduated, I knew I wanted to go into grad school and I still wasn't entirely sure what I wanted to do. But at the time, the oil and gas industry was doing very well. And I had taken a stratigraphy class that I really liked. And you know, you look at seismic lines, and I thought that was that was really interesting. So you can see the, the history of the world almost in these sections that you piece together like a puzzle. And so that got me interested in this uh, potentially an oil and gas field. So I ended up going to Louisiana State University, which has a, a strong oil and gas program. And my, my graduate work was actually more chemistry related, but I took a lot of cor coursework related to petroleum geology. And when I was close to graduation, maybe uh, in the middle of my, uh, let's say, after my first year of the summer in between those, those first two years of grad school, there was a, uh, a, a job alert that was sent by the, uh, by the geology department to all the students and it was for a, a USGS student contractor position, like a student worker job. And I, you know, recognized USGS. I'd worked for them before as a volunteer. So I went and applied to it and they, they brought me on board to do some, some geologic mapping for a groundwater model study. So this transition that I did, it started as a pretty much a volunteer intern. I had jumped on this opportunity, even though I wasn't making anything. It was just like a, an exposure kind of thing to try it out. And then that became a, a position where I made a little bit of money as a student worker. And, and then when I graduated, they uh, liked the work that I was doing and they decided to keep me on board as a, um, a temporary employee. So I still wasn't technically a, like a, a full employee yet. And I worked for them for another three or four years in that kind of capacity before they eventually hired me. Um, the government can be a little weird like that, where sometimes they like to really test somebody out before they, they go on board and hire them completely, just because it can be a little difficult with all the paperwork to, <laughs> to fire somebody or let them go if they don't like them. So they tend to 
put you through that process, which can be very long. And, but ultimately, I, I stuck with it, and uh, I liked the work that I was doing, and they appreciated my my drive to get things done and study the kind of things they were interested in. So um, I stuck with it. I had to give some advice to an earlier, younger version of myself or somebody that's early in their career, possibly still a student, is to spend a little time figuring out the best way that you learn specifically. And I think there's a tendency just to jump right in when you're in school, you're just, you have a ton of classes and you just immediately hit the books and start studying and cramming for tests and that kind of thing. But I don't think enough time is spent on figuring out what's the most efficient way to learn things. And when you get into the workforce and especially as a student, you, you really don't stop learning things. And in a job where you're not learning anything, you're probably doing the same thing every day, which I'm sure is unappealing to most people. That would get pretty boring. So you want to go into a job where, you know, you are learning new things and that's going to necessitate an ability to learn effectively and retain the information that you're trying to learn. And if you have a lot of dedication and you're very driven, it's very easy just to work yourself to the bone and just throw yourself at a problem, but it's important to do it intelligently and realize that you need to take breaks. Um, for example, you could work 14 hours straight. That might be easy for somebody, but you have to realize that maybe after eight hours of working, you're just, your efficacy is very low. And that can become easily a, this positive feedback loop where you're working a lot and getting nothing done and just draining your energy at the same time and not taking time to recharge. So my recommendation, I think, would be to learn how to relax and compartmentalize your work and learn how to know yourself and how you learn so that you don't have to waste a lot of time relearning things that maybe you, you should have kept in your memory by revisiting the concept periodically or approaching it a different way. I really appreciate you doing this, Max. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's it's been a pleasure to catch up with you and, and hear what you've been up to. No, thank you. That, I think your channel is a great idea and uh, it'll be a good resource for people that need information on geosciences.